students welcome to my live teaching learning session of BECS 184 data analysis in today's session we will discuss about tools of data collection and presentation in previous sessions you have studied about what is data analysis how we can analyze the collected data what types of statistics branches we have to study under data analysis there are two types of branches of statistics one is descriptive and other is inferential so what is data data you know data is a numerical term in which we can express each and everything in data terms which can be quantified which can be measurable if variables are qualitative they can't be accurately measured in terms of numbers or in terms of exact figures that will not be called data so data is data may be quantified data if data is quantified then we can accurately measure the anything which we want to measure but if data is qualitative it means if any uh, fact is qualitative which can't be measured in terms of accurate numbers or figures that will be called qualitative data so here today we will discuss about tools of data collection in this uh, session we will discuss methods techniques and tools do you know what helps you make your point clear they are simple you can organize your idea clearly you will never forget to buy milk and the most important thing is the audience won't miss the point of your presentation so methods techniques and tools in this we will clear all the concepts related to data collection and presentation what are the various methods of presentation of collected data because in data analysis we must have to know about what is data how we can collect data how we can present data and how we can interpret the data or analyze the data so that we can conclude or we can get result from our above analysis so data analysis is totally based on uh, data statistics types of statistics and what are the various methods of collection of data we know that there are two types of data one is primary data and other is secondary data primary data is that data which is collected by investigator or researcher himself or herself and secondary data is that data which is not collected by investigator or researcher which is collected by other institutions other organizations and if we use that published data which is published by other persons but if we use that data that is called secondary data primary data is more original more reliable but it takes too much time it is very expensive method and secondary data is less expensive it means less costly and it takes less time because it is already collected by other persons you are using that data for your purpose or for your motive so secondary data is less expensive less time taking but secondary data is not original or very reliable uh, as compared to primary data so data collection and presentation uh, we will study about this thing in today's session next is what is data collection you know data is the accurate numbers or accurate figures of any in fact or anything so data if we define this thing 
it's a factual information as measurements or statistics used as a basis for reasoning, discussion, or calculation. Data collection is a part of evidences, based practices, and is necessary for writing quality daily notes. Data provides us objective information regarding students' response to therapy intervention. The analyzed data can help make decisions about the effectiveness of therapy and illustrate whether a skill is mastered, retained, or generalized. So measurable data should be reported in every daily note. So data collection is a way through which we can collect data for our data analysis. So data is a numerical term. Data is a uh, that thing which can be measured in terms of accurate figures and data collection has a specific objective because if we want to do research, if we want to analyze the collected data, then we need to collect data. Either it may be we can collect it from uh, primary sources and from secondary sources. Next is the types of types of methods or techniques for data collection. There are different tools for data collection. Here, there are different types or methods and techniques of data collection. One is interview. If we conduct interview, then we can collect data. So interview is a very good way uh, for the purpose of collecting data. So first method or technique for the collection of data is interview. Interview may be structured. Interview may be uh, unstructured. An interview may be focused. An interview may be uh, by uh, specific if you are uh, uh, you have fixed some limited questions and you are asking from that person from which you want to collect the data that is called structured interview in which questions you can't increase or decrease if already you have mentioned 10 questions then you can't increase or decrease the numbering of the question and you can ask only those questions which you have written not beyond that so that is called structured interview but if we, a person is a familiar and if he is willing to give more information and you don't have any structured questions or particular questions or specific questions, so you can ask any other information which is related for your study, then data collection can or more be easily. So interview may be structured, may be unstructured. So interview in this data collection tools are interview schedule and opinion and opinion basis. It means and you can make questionnaire also. So next, uh, this is the first way of collecting the data that is interview. An interview is a very good way for collecting primary data and it's a very reliable source. If a person is giving you uh, correct answers, then you can collect correct information through the conduction of or conducting the interview. Either it may be structured or it may be unstructured. Next is the questioning. In this, you can make questionnaire. Questionnaire is a very good tool for collecting data. And most of the students and most of the researchers or investigators generally use this questionnaire method for collecting the data. So questionnaire in which we have some fixed or limited questions which is related to our purpose of data collection. So questionnaire, questionnaire means a specific uh, numbering of questions through which we can collect data. But questionnaire, uh, you can collect data through questionnaire, but questionnaire you can give only those person who are educated, who are literate. Illiterate person can't give answer of your questionnaires. So this is the big drawback of uh, this uh, questionnaire tool because uh, this tool 
through which we can collect data is applicable only uh, on educated person or literate person where people are uneducated illiterate uh, we can't get any information uh, through questionnaire next is observation observation is also the best way for collection of data in this uh, we can give rating scale we can use this rating scale checklist uh, these are the main tools for data collection uh, through observation observation is uh, our point of view if we are observing that uh, how many people are using uh, mobile phone or iphone through observation it means in a our office or in a school or in a college or in any uh, bus stop uh, we can sit and we can focus uh, on those persons who are using iphones and through observation we can get information regarding this that how many people are using iphone so this is the uh, observation method through which we can collect data next is uh, biological method uh, by uh, physiological method is uh, in vivo method in vitro method in this uh, we can use uh, uh, data collection through the persons uh, if any person autobiography is given if any published data is given then we can take data through publications or through uh, books journals etc and other methods are like projective techniques uh, uh question source etc so these are the tools of data collection next is what is data collection tools data collection tools in short form we can write dct here yeah, dct means data collection tools data collection tools are the tools applied in data collection a particular technique can involve different tools so data collection tools are one is questionnaire next is way rating scale uh, it means we can give rating scale through observations measuring tape and sipno sipo gro mo manner meter and observation checklist and microscope so these are the different tools through which we can collect data data collection tools are basically of two types one is quantitative and other is qualitative one quantitative data uh, is that data in which we can quantify the facts or anything which can be accurately measurable so data collection tools are basically two one is quantitative and other is qualitative in quantitative we can use for data collection um, online web face to face like interview telephonic interview we can use also and uh, mail Through uh, we can mail a questionnaire uh, through the uh, through our phone, and we can get information from correspondents and those persons who are uh, giving the answers of our questionnaire. And next is central location intercept. So these are the tools of quantitative uh, data collection. Next is qualitative tools. Qualitative tools are like online forums, online communities. web survey group trades diets and depth interview these are the qualitative methods of collecting data so there are two types of tools of data collection one is uh, quantitative and other is qualitative next is qualitative data collection tools with online like online forums because uh, we have discussed quantitative tools like face to face interview interview may be structured may be unstructured interview may be fo uh, focused and interview may be telephonic we can uh, get information through telephones and we can make questionnaire and through we can get information that these are the different tools of collecting data are called quantitative tools of data collection but qualitative data collection tools are like online forums this uh, is uh, 100% uh, this uh, 100 online forum means in this we can collect data through online online communities online uh, web survey and focus group uh, 
and depth interview. These are the qualitative, qualitative methods of data collection. Focus group means in which we can get information through those persons uh, which are involved in our research study and web survey and online communities. These all things are the qualitative tools of data collection. Next is, what is the difference between questionnaires and schedules? Questionnaire generally sent through mail to informants to be answered as specified in a covering letter, but otherwise without further assistance from the sender. But the schedule, schedule means table or schedules means if we are making schedules or table in case of schedules because these are filled by enumerator schedules are filled by enumerator but questionnaires are filled by uh, the person uh, from which you can get information uh, if you are sending uh, questionnaires through mail to the informants and informants are giving directly information to uh, that researcher that is called questionnaires but the schedule means if people are not responding, uh, not giving answers to your questionnaires and uh, do not respond and many returns the questionnaire without answering all questions and uh, bias may also be possible in this. Then uh, enumerator. Enumerator is that person uh, who directly uh, went to uh, informants and uh, collect the information uh, through asking questions which are mentioned in questionnaire. So if questionnaires are filled by enumerator who are able to get answers to all the questions and from this method, we can get information from all the participants or all the informants, either they are literate or illiterate, they are educated or uneducated, we can get information from all the country people Either they are living in rural areas or in urban areas. But there remains the danger of an interviewer bias and cheating. In case of questionnaire, it is not always clear as to who replies. But in case of schedule, the information is collected well in time as they are filled by enumerator. Enumerator is a person, a specialized person, uh, which uh, who have different uh, knowledge of different languages and uh, who are able to collect informations uh, through questionnaire. So, uh, but this uh, schedule method or enumerator method for collecting data uh, through questionnaire is very costly or expensive. Personal contact is generally not possible in case of the questionnaire method because questionnaire you can send to the informants by mail or you can by post you can also send the questionnaire to the informants in this direct or personal contact is not possible but uh, in case of schedule direct personal contact is possible with respondents or informants so this is the difference between questionnaire and schedule. Next is, uh, what is the difference between interview method and questionnaire method through which we can collect data? Interview method is the first method of collecting data uh, in quantitative uh, data collection tools. So in this method, in interview method, information is collected from individuals. But in questionnaire, in this method, information is collected from a large number of people. Interview method is more flexible and less economical. But questionnaire method is less flexible and more economical. Why interview is more flexible? Because when you are uh, taking interview of any person uh, for getting information, then you can ask any question. If interview is not structured, then you can ask any question from that person and you can get information 
or you can collect data according to your purpose. But in questionnaire, when you have set some specific questions, like 10 questions you have set, and then you can't increase or decrease the number of questions, in this case, the questionnaire method is less flexible because when we can't change anything uh, in the prescribed questionnaire numbering, that is called less flexible. And But it is more economical because if you have uh, uh, set the limited questions uh, for getting mm, information through informants or respondent and you want to collect data from this questionnaire method, then you can uh, send this questionnaire to your respondents or informants by mail. So this is very economical. Uh, you don't need to go uh, to that person or directly contact that person. Uh, so you can easily collect the data through mail or by post. They can give answers to the prescribed questions in your questionnaire. So questionnaire method is very uh, economical and less flexible. And interview method is more flexible and less economical because while conducting interview, um, you have to spend some money and you have to go there. So you have to pay some cost. Next is it takes a lot of time and money to conduct. Interview takes a lot of time and money also uh, for conducting any interview. But questionnaire takes less time, less money to conduct. Next is the interview method. Only one person can be interviewed at a time. You can't uh, get uh, uh, interview. You can't take interview of so many persons at a particular time period. So in this method, only one person can be interviewed at a time. But in questionnaire method, uh, you can send this questionnaire uh, at a time, uh, thousands of people by mail. So in this method, single questionnaire can mail too many persons. So uh, this is the basic difference. Okay, interview, uh, you can take interview only one person at a particular time period, but questionnaire can mail too many persons at a particular time period. In this case, in interview method, chances of non-responses are almost nil because while taking interview, the person definitely give answers to uh, your question when you are taking direct or face-to-face -face interview. So in this interview uh, is conducted like face-to-face -face interview. So in this case, non-response are almost nil because of direct interaction between interviewer and the respondents. But in case of questionnaire, there is no direct contact or personal contact with the informants or respondent. So in this case, non-response is high because of people avoid answering in email. Next is interview in this case, uh, order of questions can be changed as per needs. But in questionnaire, you can't change the order of numbers of questions because questionnaire, if you uh, set some limited questions in your questionnaire, then you can't change because it is less flexible. So in this case, the questions is written in a proper manner, which are not flexible, which can't be easily changeable. But in interview, you can change the order of questions easily according to your needs. So this is the difference between interview and questionnaire method from which we can collect data. Next is the presentation of data. How we can present the collected data? Presentation of data also very important thing because if we have collected data, but we don't know how to present this data, how to analyze this data, then we can't interpret, we can't uh, conclude uh, anything from the collected data. And if we can't interpret or can't conclude from the collected data, then our efforts are useless or waste. So after collecting the data and after uh, getting the information from which methods we can collect the data, we must have to know about how we can present the collected data. So presentation of data is also very important thing 
and this is the method by which the people organize summarize and communicate information using a variety of tools such as tables graphs and diagrams uh, the different methods we can use for presenting the data are tables tables are tabular presentation of collected data graphs graphs means bar graph and time series graph and uh, pie diagram diagram we can draw pie diagram bar diagram and time series graph and other uh, graphs histogram we can draw and we can use for presenting the data next is what are the uses of presentation why we have to present the data why we have to use this presentation uh, method for uh, showing our collected data in a very systematic way so what is the use of presentation of data presentation is very necessary because uh, uh, it present our data uh, very easily and uh, we can easily understand the subject if data is accurately or arranged in a systematic manner so it provides first hand information about data uh, presentation of data is very helpful in future analysis presentation of data is very uh, useful for making easy uh, the things which we can compare and it is a very attractive method if we use presentation method for presenting our data that will be more attractive and uh, one diagram is equivalent to 1000 words if we want to show uh, our data through diagram that is the very good way for understanding the main thing or fact because a single diagram can say thousands of words it means uh, data presentation method is very important thing if you are saying so many things but if you are presenting only one uh, graph that graph will show each and everything without saying few words or many words so this is the uses of presentation it is very easy and better understanding of the subject it provides first hand information about data it is helpful in future analysis and it is uh, uh, it makes very easy for comparison and it is very attractive also next is graphical presentation of data graphical presentation of data you know that there are two types of statistics one is descriptive and other is inferential in descriptive statistics first we have to uh, collect the data and then we have to summarize the data uh, in descriptive statistics we include two things number one is organization of data and number two is summarization of data so descriptive statistics can also be divided into two subjects area one is graphical method and next is numerical method in numerical method we have discussed in last sessions like different uh, measures of uh, central tendency in which mean median mode you can use presenting the uh, you can use analyze the data in numerical terms and measures of dispersion in which you have studied about uh, standard deviation mean deviation range quartile deviation next uh, skewness kurtosis and these are the different uh, numerical methods uh, for analyzing the data but the other way uh, of uh, analyzing the data is graphical method which is also a part of descriptive statistics so in this session we introduce several graphical techniques which is useful for presenting and summarizing data so uh, data collection is very necessary first of all we have to collect data and after that we can analyze the data with the help of uh, numerical methods or uh, in second method we can use graphical method and uh, numerical method we have discussed in previous sessions 
but in today's session we are discussing about graphical methods next is principles of presentation what are the principles or rules of presentation uh, there are some important rules which we have to follow while presenting the data that is number one is data should be presented in simple form next is uh, uh, it uh, uh, should increase the interest of the reader next is it should be concise but without losing important details next is uh, it facilitate further statistical analysis and it defines the problem and should suggest the solution also so these are the principles of presentation because if we are presenting our data through different diagrams or graphs then we must know about how we can present the data in different diagrams and which method is more appropriate to express the information which we have collected through the way of data collection or through the tools of data collection so these are the principles of presentation next is presentation of data presentation of data has two types one is data may be presented by tabular or table and data may be presented by graphs so tabular presentation table may be simple table table may be complex table if you are showing one variable in a table that is called simple table but if you are showing different variables in a single table that is called complex table it means if you are talking about population whole population then population will be divided into two parts one is male other is female then another we can sub parts of this male and female male may be uh, living in rural areas or in urban areas and female also may be living in rural areas or in urban areas then another we can uh, take sub parts of this rural and urban people may be literate or illiterate in rural areas or in urban areas literate illiterate same as female uh, ladies uh, or female may be literate or illiterate in rural areas or may be literate or illiterate in urban areas so if uh, we are showing different things in a sim sim but if we are showing only one thing like production of agriculture uh, in a single table if we are showing that the total number of crops like wheat rice and sugar uh, sugar cane etc and if we are showing only one item in a single table that is called simple table so table may be simple and table may be complex and graphical presentation method in which we use two things one is quantitative data data may be quantified data may be uh, measured in accurate numbers or figures so for quantitative data we use histogram the tools of uh, quantitative data and qualitative data collection techniques are different and presenting techniques are different so don't mix this thing that uh, quantitative data and qualitative data we have discussed earlier but that are the different uh, methods of collection of data uh, in which we uh, can use different methods of collection of data either it may be quantitative data or qualitative data but here we are discussing about presentation of data so the tools of presentation of data are different in quantitative terms or in qualitative terms so quantitative data uh, can be show graphically with the help of histogram frequency polygon frequency curve line chart or time series graph normal distribution curve which is a bell shaped curve or uh, which is a which shows symmetrical distribution in which mean median mode are equal and uh, other is ogive curve and uh, it is also known as cumulative frequency curve or cumulative distribution curve and next is scatter diagram Uh, scatter diagram is very helpful to show the uh, relationship between two variables uh, mm -hmm. if we are studying about correlation 
and if we are discussing about uh, the relationship between two variables and if we want to show what type of relationship exists in between of two variables it may be positive it may be negative it may be perfect positive may be perfect negative or may be zero then we can show this uh, relationship without uh, using a numerical method we can show or express the relationship between two variable with the help of scatter diagram so scatter diagram is very important thing uh, which we use in uh, expressing the correlation between two variables with the help of diagram and uh, to see the diagram we can easily say that what type of relationship exists in between of two variables or more than two variables and for qualitative data we use bar chart pictogram pictogram means pictures and uh, uh, pie chart and map diagram so there are um, four methods uh, to present the qualitative data one is bar chart next is pictogram third is pie chart and fourth is map data and for quantitative data we have different methods like histogram frequency polygon frequency curve line chart normal distribution curve cumulative distribution curve and scatter diagram so these are the different methods of presenting the data next is classification of data and tabular presentation uh, we first of all we have to classify the data which we have collected through different methods so quantity qualitative classification classification may be qualitative may be quantitative so qualitative data occurs when the data are classified on the basis of qualitative features for a phenomena for example unemployment in punjab by sex and location uh, it means uh, we have taken three things one is uh, male female uh, in table three columns are here in first column sex means male and female we have taken in second column location location may be rural may be urban in rural uh, 20 male and 30 female and in urban 10 male and 20 female this is simply classification of data in a tabular presentation it's a very simple way to express the collected data in a very systematic way tabular presentation is that presentation in which we show the collected data in a tabular form in which rows and columns are made and we give headings of each rows and columns and then express the uh, data which we have collected so this is the uh, tabular presentation method next is classification versus tabulation what is the difference between classification classification generally Uh, is uh, the method which we use after collecting the data so classification is uh, 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 classification is the second step after collecting data classify the collected data into different groups uh, in this uh, classification means sorting the data to analyze the data and it uh, uh, can classify the collected data it means uh, if uh, data is uh, data are uh, similar nature data then we can take in one side and non similar data we can put it on the other side so classification is generally the arrangement of data and it divides the data into two categories or sub categories but tabulation tabulation is the method uh, which use after classification so tabulation use after classification but classification use after data collection and tabulation present the classified data in tabular form it is a method of presenting the data and uh, to present the data in tabular form in rows and columns and it divides the data into headings and subheadings so this is the difference between classification and tabulation next is what are the good uh, uh, features of a good table so we must follow 
the features of book table there are no hard and fast rule for making tabulation or making table for collected data but for constructing book table following general rules we have to follow one is the table should suit the size of the paper table not be in large or not very big or not in very small uh, it means the width of the columns should be decided before uh, presenting the da data in a tabular form so table should suit the size of the paper and therefore the width of the columns should be decided and number of columns and rows should neither be too large nor too big uh, too large or big or not too small as far as possible figures should be approximated before tabulation this would reduce unnecessary details so these are the features or characteristics of a good table next is a table may be grouped frequency tables the tabulation of raw data raw data is uh, the data which we have collected uh, from any way that is called raw data which is which is not arranged which is not classified which is not presented by tabular presentation uh, so before presenting the data uh, if we have collected the data that is called raw data so tabulation of raw data by dividing the whole range of observation into a number of classes and indicating the corresponding class frequencies against the class interval that is called grouped frequency distribution and the grouped frequency distribution in this we take in first column we take class intervals like 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 and in next column we take frequency so this is called grouped frequency table this is also the uh, method of uh, tabular presentation uh, tabular presentation may be simple or may be complicated or maybe in a grouped frequency method. Next is uh, uh, presenting the diagram, uh, presenting the data in a diagrammatic way in this uh, histogram. Histogram is that method in which we can present the collected data in a uh, this way. In this, uh, uh, first of all, we will take on x-axis class interval and then we can take frequency on y-axis and then we can make the boxes like this here length width of uh, the boxes are same because the gap between class interval like 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 the gap between different uh, class intervals if it remains same but the frequency may be differ frequency may be 4 9 11 7 4 so according to the given frequency uh, length uh, can be differ but the width of the this uh, diagram will remain same and all these uh, diagrams are attached or interconnected with other so this is called histogram this is also a very good method for presenting the collected data next is frequency polygon frequency polygon is a very simple way uh, if you want to draw frequency polygon then we must draw histogram uh, first of all we will draw histogram then we will take the center point of this histogram and then we join these center points with the help of uh, uh, scale then this is called frequency polygon and frequency curve is also very simple frequency curve and frequency polygon there is not too much difference between uh, these two concepts frequency polygon under this we take the center points of histogram and uh, join these center points with the help of scale but when we are drawing frequency curve then we will not use scale we will use free hand curve we will draw free hand curve without any uh, cut or without any intersection if we draw free hand curve that will be called normal distribution curve or bell shape curve so if we join these center points with the help of scale that is frequency polygon but if we join these center points only uh, without using scale and only free hand curve we are drawing without taking any edges or cuts that is called frequency curve 
next is histogram versus bar graph what is the difference between histogram and bar graph bar graph and histograms may seem alike but they are very different histograms are attached with other histogram but bar graphs are not attached bar graphs are uh, in a uh, in a particular gap we can draw bar graph bar graph represent categorical data histogram represent numerical data bar graph have spaces between the bars but histogram shows a space between bars only who when no data values fall between the bars otherwise histogram uh, shows no space in between of bars bars in a bar graph can be in any order but histogram must be in a numerical order in a bar graph the number of bars depends on the number of categories but in histogram we choose how many bars to use so this is the difference between histogram and bar graph next is pie chart what is pie chart pie chart is also called pie graph or circle graph uh, make use of sectors in a scale, circle the angles of a sector is proportional to the frequency of the data a pie chart is a very good way of displaying data when you want to show how something shared or divided pie chart is a very simple or very attractive way of presenting the data like this this is a uh, pie chart here if we want to show uh, what subject is most favorite subject for the students and uh, here the sum of this circle should be 360 degree and if we are showing here uh, mathematics uh, is a 144 degree it means most of the students uh, uh, want to take this subject mathematics 144 degree and uh, next is french 108 degree and next is english 72 degree and the least favorite subject uh, here we uh, are seeing this in this pie chart is science that is 36 degree it means this diagram uh, is clearly show that uh, what subject is most favorite subject for the students uh, we can show this with the help of this pie chart and this pie chart clearly explain anything which we want to show or express um, without uh, saying any without writing thousands words we can show uh, all information with the help of this pie chart and this pie chart is Uh, alone appropriate for expressing the different information and give reliable information also this is uh, pie chart next is misleading graphs there are so many graphs here one is histogram you know that histogram is uh, always in this bar no space is given next is line chart line chart is in which only we draw this is uh, frequency uh, polygon also if we are not drawing histogram we can take only points and join these points with the help of scale that is called frequency polygon and next is uh, uh, line graph which is upward sloping and it shows positive relationship between two variables that is that it can use in scatter diagram also and next is pareto chart pareto chart is used to show frequencies for nominal and qualitative variables this is also very important pareto chart and time series graph shows data uh, according to the time period it used to show a pattern or trend that occurs over a period of time and pie graph used to show the relationship between the parts and the whole uh, in which we mostly use a percentage or area of angle next is Uh, quantitative and qualitative research there are two types of research qualitative and quantitative research data collection through unstructured open ended text or verbal responses it is used when the subject matter is subjective not well understood or contains levels of nuance that would be difficult to qualify in pre selected answer choices there are two types of research here 
one is qualitative other is quantitative first of all you must have to know about what is research research means finding the information or knowledge which is previously done by another person if you are searching again and you are finding some new things uh, on that research uh, that is called research re is again and search is find out if we have find out any new thing in the previous research that is called research and research may be qualitative may be quantitative uh, if we are collecting data through unstructured open ended uh, responses that is qualitative research but if we are taking uh, collecting data through structured and controlled instruments like surveys or experiments that is called quantitative research so there is a difference between qualitative research and quantitative you know that it explains attitudes and behaviors of the market in detail and quantitative research deals for discovering who what when and where generate uh, qualitative research generate verbal information and uh, quantitative research generate numerical data because it is clear by its name it's a quant quantitative quantitative means in which we can quantify we can express numerical data we can express any information through data terms or in numerical terms so this is the basic difference between qualitative research and quantitative research case study case study is the depth study of uh, anything if you want to get information uh, related to anything in a depth that is called case study case study is a depth knowledge of any particular thing conclusion if the information is presented in tabular form or in a descriptive record it becomes difficult to draw results so in this session we have discussed about how we can collect data and how we can present the data with the help of different tools of like graphs tabular presentation and diagrams in next session we will discuss about bivariate univariate and multivariate data so till then thank you